once around teleios. So this goes back to a detection by the ASCAP array. This uh, ASCAP array is a radio telescope in the Australian desert, and the acronym, you have to have a good acronym these days for any piece of equipment, stands for the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, but ASCAP, so much easier to say. And it spotted a strangely symmetrical spherical object thousands of light years away in the sky, glowing in the radio part of the spectrum, but with no optical counterpart when the initial follow-up was done. Now, ASCAP is a technology demonstrator for the full-blown SKA, the Square Kilometre Array, which is going to consist of thousands of dishes in Australia and in South Africa. But here we have just 36 identical parabolic dishes 12 metres in diameter, uh, linked together as an interferometer, so using aperture synthesis to create the effect of one much larger disc in terms of resolution, um, and also adding the area of all the dishes together, you get the area of a larger dish, 4,000 square metres of collecting area. Uh, but the resolution, of course, is not determined by the size of the dishes, but by the distance between the most distant pairing, uh, a technique that was developed here in Cambridge by Martin Ryle shortly after World War II with the first uh, radio observatories and a lot of surplus radar equipment. So this object, Teleios, also known as G305.4-2.2, I'm going to stick to Teleios. It's from the Greek and it means perfect complete, mature, or having reached its end or its final state. And in this case, it's referring to the perfect circularity or perfect sphere of this weird con construct out there in nature. Now, we get a lot of circular things in uh, astronomy, but they're not usually quite this perfectly round. They're usually a bit more asymmetrical. They might be exploding stars or dying stars or planets or stars themselves or rings of material in colliding galaxies. We get rings all the time, but they're always a bit unsymmetrical. This one is not. It's perfect, Teleios. But there are three different competing suggestions as to what's going on here. The first two are both saying that it's a Type 1a supernova, an exploding white dwarf star that's reached the end of its life, uh, accreted more material onto it, hit the Chandrasekhar limit, and then exploded in a giant detonation, destroying utterly the uh, the White Dwarf. But the first one reckons this was a thousand years ago, and that the, uh, Teleios, the sh uh, shell of material giving off the radio waves, is 46 light years in diameter and 7,175 light years away. The other group are claiming that it's 25,000 light years away, 157 light years in diameter, and 10 times as old, 10,000 years. So quite a big difference between them. And, um, uh, well, we'll see. But the third competing theory is that it's a slightly different explosion of a white dwarf called a Type 1a X supernova. And this is where the detonation fails to completely destroy the star. And these are rather rare, and we're beginning to understand them. Now, they are fainter than the other two types of Type 1a supernova because they don't consume all of the core of the star in a burst of runaway uh, destruction. And so lower power means that for the same apparent brightness, you would have to be nearer. And so this is saying that we're 11 light years and uh, in diameter and 3,200 light years across. So three rather different estimates. And the interesting thing about type 1a supernovae is the nature of the star that survives this explosion. And we call those zombie stars. And I might do a talk all about zombie stars at some point. Perhaps I'll do it for Halloween. You never know. But these are not the only things that the ASCAP system has detected. It's detected Teleios and it's detected Orc 1. 
very Lord of the Rings orc. I suspect that's where that's come from. But it's supposed to stand for odd radio circles. We're really getting desperate with the names, aren't we? And these are only visible in the radio spectrum to begin with again. So here's a picture of an orc. And it's not as round as Teleios, but it's similar in many ways. This was imaged with the meerkat array. And then the image has been pasted onto its position against the background using the dark energy survey image here. And you can see in the background, there's quite a lot of faint galaxies, the really red ones, and one slightly nearer by one, but looks a bit twisted and warped. Now, I suspect that's going to be because it's been gravitationally lensed by a more massive object in the middle, perhaps where the orc is sitting. We don't know. But I've got this fantastic image sequence that I just want to show you coming up next of what we think is going on with these radio circles, these odd radio circles. And really, I just wanted to show you this. Here it goes. Look at this. Oh, it's going backwards and expanding again. And so we think this is a sort of impression of, there's the image that starts with a galaxy, and there's an enormous outburst of something from a galaxy that we haven't spotted uh, of this enormous spherical shockwave. So this is probably what we think is happening with um, the uh, odd radio circles, the orcs. But maybe it's also happening with Teleios, and we're just happening to be looking at it in a direction that makes an ellipse look like a perfect circle. And so there is the final image of Teleios for you. And I expect we will learn more about these objects as our technology is getting better and better all the time. So thanks very much for listening. And if I hear any more about this story, I'll certainly come back to it.